Hi, this is Ellie from Middle School Math Moments and the Tools for Teaching Teens. Today I'm going to do a very quick demonstration of how to create an MC Escher style tessellation. This particular method has worked very well for middle schoolers and upper elementary students, and it makes a great end of the year project no matter what subject you teach. To make our tessellation, we're going to start with a square. I used a 3 by 3 inch square for this time just to have something big enough to have as a good example. So once you have the 3 by 3 square, you're going to take and draw a line from the upper left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner. And it can be as fancy or as simple as your students want. The more detailed it is, the more difficult it is to actually trace over and over later on. And then we do one from the upper left to the lower left. I'll just make that one a little more simple. The next step is to cut the left and the top out, which you can see that I've done. And I've just set them right next to each other here, the cut part next to the original square, just to show how one side fits into the other. This tends to be the most difficult um, part for students, as far as I've seen, um, when they need to take this top part and transfer it down to the bottom. They tend to flip it over or switch up which one goes where, and they get a little bit confused about that. So I like to tell them to simply you know, kind of slide this one over and down to the bottom so that they don't move it or flip it in any way. And then take this one and slide it over to the left, to the right, sorry, to the right. And that way they have their shape completely formed so that the top will fit into the bottom and the left will fit into the right as they trace. Actually taping these on can also be a little bit tricky. So I like to have a little bit of tape on this side, so all we have to do is set the piece onto the tape. So we just need to line up corner with corner very, very carefully, make sure that they match. And then press down and it's nice and lined up. That little piece of tape will have to get folded over or cut off. And then the same on the other side, corner to corner, making sure that it's really well aligned so that it doesn't mess up the tracing. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Okay, and then just press it down and then it's taped nicely and then we are ready to start tracing. So then you probably want to move it around to see what you think it looks like. And for the students, sometimes this is a difficult thing. Here are a couple that students have made in the past. The student made this one look like a frog, which is very cool. And the student made this one look like different colored monsters, which is very unique. This is one that I made last year. Um, I rotated it around in different directions, trying to visualize what it might look like when it was finally traced. And I had a, a few different thoughts. And this particular one I thought looked kind of like the beast from Beauty and the Beast, but I decided not to use that. I went ahead and traced it with um, pencil and did all the tracing, lining everything up. And then I went over the outline in Sharpie so that it would be more defined. And then after again moving it around a few different ways, I finally decided that I was going to make it be um, a lizard sitting on a rock with um, that long part being its tail and you know, kind of basking itself in the sun. So after I drew in everything and colored it, this is what it actually ended up looking like. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day and get to check out some of the other video blogs on the Tools for Teaching Teens site.